Congratulations. Thank you. So how are you how are you feeling now that you can let the world know that you've you've won RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under? Oh well, I mean, I didn't I didn't get to let the world know. I didn't know myself, so uh, I was um, equally as surpri surprised, pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yeah. So what was your time on the competition like? Looking back on on the eight weeks that you were there. Oh, it was amazing. It was um, unlike anything I could ever have imagined, um, but uh, just the most overwhelmingly positive experience. There were there were some really hard times uh, emotionally and mentally, but um, you know, like there's no what do they say? There's no like reward without pain or whatever. You know, like everything at the end of the day is so special and. Um, and fabulous. I'm just, yeah, I'm very, very grateful that I got to to experience it for sure. Mm. Now I asked a lecture this last week and, and you just mentioned growth as well. How have you grown through this competition as, as a person and also as a drag artist? Well, I mean, I, I grew a little bit in size because like I gave into eating chips, yeah. <laughs> I, like my diet was like so good. And I was like, you know, like when you're stuck in that hotel room, it's like, I'm going to eat a little bit of chip, chips and a little bit of chocolate, but yeah, you know, like, I, I'm not going to be too hard on myself. It was like, it was a moment in time and I needed to go there. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what were some of your highlights on the competition then as well? I mean, like watching you grow and, and just, you know, evolve as an artist was it really incredible i must say and i'm just so pleased that you won but what, what oh, was the absolute highlight you know the highlight um is of course like meeting uh rupaul and michelle passage like the the energy that they just like emit is like you can't even put into words it, it, it feels like supernatural um so th that was definitely like the highlight was being able to be around them um and of course like you know I got to meet and then like after the whole thing hang out with Reese Nicholson which was like you know he's he's a fucking icon isn't he yeah he's a battle of laughs Reese he's, he's quite fun yeah total yeah. stuff happened too yeah you're right <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think it's it's done for you taking home the crown as well to New Zealand? Um, yeah, I guess um, that's yeah. to ask. Um, I I learned um, that um, I don't don't handle. Sorry, I I learned that I don't handle um, reality TV pressure very well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's probably not something that i would like uh actively uh pursue um although in saying that no it was a lot of fun so i probably would totally do it all over again um um what did i take away from the competition um do you know, do you know the, the the coolest thing that i got from the competition was um growing my little drag sisterhood you know like um i've worked with a few aussie queens i've was been very privileged to do uh the broken heel festival in the past um but you know just to be able to like meet more of my aussie sisters and and um form that bond that that was special Mm. like I'd worked with um Jojo before uh and it was so it was so hard to see her go first because like one of the coolest things I was like oh my god I get to hang out with Jojo for like a few yeah. weeks and then and then like you know that was and then she went so that was hard um but like hanging out with Coco was amazing hanging out with Maxie was amazing um you know I'd met etc before but being able to really connect with her that was that was the best part of the whole thing yeah, absolutely. Do you think, because there was a lot of shade thrown around in this season as well, do you reckon that was pretty true, what ended up in, on the cutting room floor to what actually happened in the workroom? Do you think that that's a, a fair kind of... Yeah, yeah, it is. And like, I mean, like, everything that was there was definitely, like, happened, and it, it wasn't, like, doctored, but, um, but, th but there's also, like, probably elements of, like, if you're only seeing kind of like one side of the situation, you know, so it definitely, all the shade is real. It definitely all happened, but um, it's probably not as heavy as, as people would think it was, you know? Yeah. 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 Cause I guess that kind of shade is a little bit of the rapport between drag queens as well. And, and, and in the queer community. For sure. And like, especially in New Zealand and I imagine in Australia too, like we're quite brash and we're quite just like, we kind of just like shoot from the hip. So like, you know, I, it's probably more, um, I, I guess from the, from the rest of the world's perspective, they might see it as like, whoa, that's like intense, but we're kind of just like, man, it's flippant, you know? Yeah.
So I guess, I mean, this is such a big moment for you as well. What would be some of the, the words of advice or um, encouragement to younger queens coming up through the ranks as well? Because RuPaul's done so much for representation. Yeah, for sure. The best advice I've ever been given, and it was given to me by uh, one of my drag aunties, um, was when you go into drag, it's so easy to get lost in things that are like self-serve, uh, like self-indulgent. Like, um, you know, you get so many compliments when you're in drag. You get told you're beautiful. You get told you're funny. Uh, you get offered things. You, you know, you. It, it's very like um, people. People want to give to you constantly. Mm. Um, and um, the advice I got given and that I try to um, echo is um, that's like very dangerous to like to have your focus on that um mm. to, to if your focus is i want to go and look beautiful and get compliments then um it, that's never going to serve you so the advice would be to um put the focus on um of like giving love go out there get get in drag so you can go and make someone's night that much better and mm. that way you know if you're doing that um then um the love will still come back to you but you know like give the love before before you go out there trying to get it i think yeah what is it about drag that inspired you to start drag and what do you love about it i guess and how did you start as well now i'm getting my train of thought back yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. um so uh, like i've always been theatrical i've always just loved being a dickhead you know just like being stupid um I've always been uh, had a like a wild imagination so you know all of those things just um create a drag queen you know so I feel like I am everything about me is suited to being a drag queen um so that's what drew me to it I just feel like it's the best career path for for a weirdo like me <laughs> <laughs> and how will life change for you now well, um, like, you know, the, it's the reach, isn't it? So RuPaul's mm. Drag Race is such a, a respected um, cultural phenomenon. So, um, you know, RuPaul gives me the honour of being the, you know, first winner of RuPaul's Drag Race Down Under. That's like a huge honour, but people will... Um, people will listen people will listen to that and uh they will uh want to keep an eye on me and see what i do next so uh, i'm very grateful that i've been given this opportunity and now i'm just gonna uh hit the ground running uh, <laughs> keep keep uh, keep laughing and keep encouraging others to laugh and um just i'm still gonna be that stupid stupid little weird clown from auckland new zealand <laughs> just doing it on a bigger stage 